Hello and welcome to this lesson on impact forces, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how to analyze and calculate impact forces. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate the impact force found in a collision, understand the consequences of the impact force on object and investigate the impact forces on various objects. So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQA A-Level Physics Specification 3.4.1.6 Momentum. Now, as we looked at previously before, we have said that F times by delta T is equal to delta MV. Now, therefore, we can define both force times by the change in time and the change in momentum as the impulse. So the impulse is a force applied for a certain time. Now, as mentioned before, the impulse causes a change in momentum for an object and is measured in kilogram meters per second or newton seconds. Now, this impulse refers to one object in a collision or an interaction. Now, the large larger the impulse on an object, the greater its change in momentum. So we can f uh, define the impulse fundamentally as the product of the force and the time for which the force acts on the object. Now, as mentioned previously, we have discussed Newton's second law of motion for a constant mass, which is that the force is directly proportional to the acceleration. Okay, so therefore we can say F equals MA. Now we also know that acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time, so we can substitute that into the equation and say f equals m times by the change in velocity over the change in time. Now we know the change in momentum delta p is equal to delta mv. So therefore, if we said F equals delta MV over delta T, this tells us that the resultant force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. Now, this is a really fundamental equation in physics because it can predict the motion of an object subjected to forces even when the mass changes with time. Now, this statement also effectively defines what is meant by what was meant by a force in physics. It's an interaction that causes an object's momentum to change. So if an object if momentum is changing, there must be a resultant force acting on it. Now we can find the size and the direction of the force by measuring the rate of change of an object's momentum. Now this can be used in many different situations. So for example, think about an object rebounding off a wall. We know that the force is equal to the change in momentum over the contact time with the wall. So we can therefore say F equals minus MV minus MU over T and that allows us to work out the force exerted on this object. Now note we've got a minus V because the, it's, it's in the opposite direction to the original velocity. Again, so we can then simplify this a bit further because if the collision was in fact elastic, that the momentum and the kinetic energy was conserved, this tells us that the values for V and U will be the same. So we can say that now minus V MV minus MU over T is therefore equal to minus 2 MU over T. And that's actually a fundamental equation which you come across when we're looking at gas pressure. Now, as well as that, if the impact is oblique, then the horizontal components of that velocity must be considered. So therefore, if we have in this example, as you can see here, the momentum is going to be m cos th uh, theta u initially, and then after it's rebounded, it's minus m cos theta v. Again, remember some minus because it's in the opposite direction. So now this allows us to work out the force exerted to be minus m cos theta v minus m cos theta u all over t. Now, this concept of F is equal to the change in momentum over the contact time even explains why UFC fighters like Conor McGregor break their own, can break their own knuckles when they punch another fighter in the face. Now, the impact force of this collision is very high because the punch is very quick and very sudden, so the low contact time increases the impact force and can actually break the fighter's hand. So, to increase the contact time on the hand, they will wear gloves, which lowers the impact force. So, it's a very fundamental concept in physics that the the longer it takes for an object to stop or in a collision and for the momentum to change, the less force that's required to stop it. So when the impact time of a collision or event is large, the resultant force acting on the object is small. So if a speeding car crashes, then the time is very small, so therefore the impact force is huge, which can be very dangerous. Because as I said before, the rate of change of momentum for an object is directly proportional to the impact force exerted on it. 
which is Newton's second law of motion. So vehicles are designed to minimise the forces exerted on them during a collision with various different features, so things like seat belts, airbags and crumple zones. So it's why cars have crumple zones at the front and back, because these parts of the car are weak enough to crumple but strong enough to do so slowly. So this increases the time taken to change momentum, so it decreases the resultant force on the car. Now car passengers have similar protection because airbags and seat belts help in Increase the time it takes for the passengers to stop. So, as the time to change momentum for an object increases, the resultant force on that object decreases. In addition, seat belts actually stretch slightly, increasing the time taken for the wearer to stop. Airbags inflate before you hit the dashboard of the car. The compressing air inside slows you down more gradually than if you just hit the hard dashboard. In addition, bike helmets contain a cushable layer of foam, which helps lengthen the time taken for your uh, your head to stop in a crash which reduces the impact on your brain. Now crash mats and cushion playground flooring increase the time taken for you to stop if you fall on them because they're made from soft compressionable materials. So it's important to note that the crash mat and the cushion playground flooring increase the time taken for you to stop if you fall on them, lowering the resultant force acting on you, lowering the chance of injury. Now imagine you're trying to catch an egg. If you, held, if you hold your hand out and didn't move it, the egg would smash. That's because the change in momentum, the impulse, takes place in a short time, making the impact force on the egg large. But if we cup the egg and move our hands down as we catch it, we make it take longer to come to a complete stop. This increases the contact time, decreases the impact force and the egg remains intact. Imagine trying to catch a cricket ball. If we didn't stop to move our hands, it would hurt when the ball stopped on our hands because the change in momentum or impulse happens in a very short time. This means the impact force on your fingers is large and can in fact break them. So what we do is if we make the contact time longer, we reduce the impact force on our hands from the ball. That's why cricketers move their hands down when they catch the ball. It increases the contact time and decreases the impact force. Packaging, especially for frail items, uses bubble wrap or polyester packaging to reduce the impact forces that the items experience in transit. This helps cushion the items by increasing the time over which they experience a force, which reduces the risk of damage. In football, increasing the contact time can be used to our advantage, as the longer the contact time, the longer the change in the larger the change in momentum. So when kicking a football, after a strong kick, the motions follow through. So the momentum from the foot is transferred to the ball, this creates a large impulse and the ball then has a higher velocity. So, if we look at our equation that force is equal to impulse over time, or the change in momentum over time, we can then look at how this, this works. So what we can say is that in this idea that whilst the total momentum of the system of the object stays constant, the momentum of one object can change. So what we can see from this equation is that by increasing the contact time, it decreases the impact force experienced by the object. Now. If we decrease the contact time, this increases the impact force experienced by the object. So as we've mentioned before, crumple zones, padding, helmets, sidebars, crash mats, seat belts all increase the impact time for a collision. So the impact force experienced by the object is reduced if we assume that the change in momentum, the impulse in the interaction stays the same. So when the time taken increases, the rate of change of momentum decreases. So that's an important idea because it means the change of momentum every second decreases. Now we can also use this information in a force time graph. In real life, forces are not often constant and will vary over time. So if we plot the force against the time, the impulse is in fact equal to the air area under the force time graph because you know the area under the curve is the y-axis times by the, the x-axis so it's force times by time which is change in momentum which is the impulse so if you have your force time graph you can work out your change of momentum or impulse by working out the area now again that's extremely useful when the force exerted is not a constant value for a collision so in this situation to find the change in momentum you must either count the squares or break up the area into different different shapes and work out the area of those shapes. 
So to summarize what we've looked at in today's lesson, force can be linked to the rate of change of momentum and the impulses to change in momentum. We should also be aware of the significance of the area under a force time graph and be able to answer quantitative questions set on forces that vary with time and impact forces that are related to contact times. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can calculate the force found in a collision, understand the consequences of the impact forces on objects and investigate the impact forces on various objects. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on impact forces, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.